This video is for you folks who need to keep an older computer running along at full capacity or for you folks who are vintage computer enthusiasts and like to collect, restore, and operate older computers. What I'm going to talk about is the Dallas clock module. Dallas clock modules were made by a company known as Dallas Semiconductor and some of them are still available today, although very few computers, if any, use one any longer. The most common part is the DS1287, which builds in a battery and an integrated circuit that maintains a CMOS memory and a real-time clock. The problem is, after so many years, these parts run out of power, and there were certain variants, such as the DS1387, that Dallas no longer produces, and so there's no replacement on the market for these. What I'm going to show you is how to rework your Dallas modules so that they can use an external power source. This has the advantage of saving you money. The new parts are oftentimes $20 or more, if you can find them. It also lets you keep using a computer that uses a Dallas part for which there is no modern replacement. Okay, before we get too far in this video, I want to apologize for the fact that some of the video that you will see has the left and right sides on the wrong side of your screen. I don't know why this is. It's something to do with the MacBook's built-in video camera, which I had to use since I couldn't find my typical digital camera to record this movie tonight. What you see here is an up-close and personal look at the side of a DS1287 real-time clock module. Now this works for pretty much the whole family of the Dallas parts if you can figure out which pins would have been connected to the battery. Now most of the time this is pretty easy because Dallas Semiconductor marketed multiple versions of the same device. For example, this DS1287 has a batterily a batteryless equivalent in the DS1285. So if you look at the DS1285 data sheet, you can figure out where the battery terminals would be on this IC and it turns out that they're just flipped up inside this package and connected to the battery. The same is true for the clock crystal which would be external on the DS1285. Now on this the negative terminal is right here where this missing pin is and the positive terminal is just three pins over and it's right there. So what you need to do is you need to start filing away the epoxy inside the chip until you see the terminals. And as you can see, I've been filing away at the negative battery terminal on this chip, which is indicated, again, by the absence of a pin down here in the bottom. I've been filing away at this with a needle nose pliers that has serrated jaws. You can use whatever you like. You know, some people like Dremel tools, but I frequently ended up destroying these modules beyond repair. The epoxy layer inside the chip is gray in color. You'll go through that until you begin to see a metal terminal. I've been whittling on this module for about five minutes now, just taking my time and going slowly. And as you can see, there's a metal terminal in there that actually bends over and leads up to the battery that is inside the casing. What you need to do with either the positive or negative terminal, and I think it's easier to do this with the negative terminal that I'm working on right now, is you need to punch through at least one of those terminals because if you hook up external batteries to this module to re-energize it and the internal battery is still connected it might explode or leak and make a mess and it'll probably blow up the module too. The best way to do that is to use something like a nail or a sharp pointed screwdriver being careful not to hurt yourself. You could also continue to use your needle nose pliers until you can simply clip through the internal connection and disconnect the internal battery. When you have your modules positive and negative terminals exposed, take a voltmeter and touch the metal that you have exposed to make sure that you've gotten the battery disconnected. If you've gotten the battery disconnected, you should read exactly zero volts. If you didn't, well, keep trying until you get it disconnected. It's very important not to skip this step. Now it's time to get started with the actual modification, and for this part you'll need the module that you just cut open and disconnected the battery from, solder suitable for use on electronics, 
some glue sticks and a glue gun to um, stiffen and reinforce the solder joints, a double-A battery holder, I'm sorry, a triple-A battery holder or a double-A battery holder that will hold two batteries for a total of three volts and a good selection of name brand batteries that you can use to re-energize your reworked module. Let's get started. I've just finished my soldering. I haven't actually done any hot gluing yet to make this thing a little sturdier. But when you're done with your soldering, what you have should look approximately like this. You should have your battery holder over here. You should make sure that your negative and positive terminal placement is correct. And if all that stuff checks out, it's time to glue this thing up for a little more sturdiness. Here's the finished product. I've got the glue on here to keep everything in its place and to avoid putting any undue strain on the freshly soldered wire connections there. So now it's time to put the batteries in. Make sure of course that you observe polarity and if your batteries don't turn red and nothing goes pop you're ready to test this thing out and see if it works. Okay now it's time to put the module back into your computer after you've inserted the batteries. Make sure that you put the batteries in so they won't short out on the system board. Make sure you get the chip inserted properly, pin 1 to pin 1 on the board. And then you're ready to try powering up. Your computer should turn on right away and it'll probably display some error codes like this computer is. When you get your module reinstalled, your computer will probably run its configuration program, or in the case of this old IBM PS2, you'll be able to use the reference disk to reset the configuration by following the prompts. And when you're done with that, you're ready to go. Exit out of your computer's configuration program, allow it to restart normally, and when it does, you should find that your computer starts without any errors whatsoever. And that's all there is to it. 